What the hell have you done now, Bob? What the hell have you done? Are you crazy? You gotta be crazy. Fool! You has got to be crazy. I do, I do dumb shit. Okay, so what we have here is a 1999 Ford E350. Uh, it's a van with the 7.3 liter turbo diesel engine, which is the most coveted, most powerful engine that you could possibly put into one of these vehicles. You're gonna hear the idle ramping up and down because it has an idle speed control monitoring system that will raise the idle to give it extra power to run all the electronics. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. This is a wheeled coach conversion ambulance. Uh, this is what's called a type three. Now, let me preface this by saying, I am not an EMT, a firefighter. I am not a you know, first responder. I am not an expert in ambulances. So if I get anything wrong, uh, please kindly comment uh, down below and tell me uh, what I missed or what I might've got wrong. Now, as I understand it, there are three types of ambulances. You have a type one, which is like a truck front with the box on the back, which doesn't have a pass through usually. Type two is just a regular sized van, uh, or also called a mini mod sometimes, I think. Then you have the type three, which is the most common, which is a van cutaway, where you can pass through, through the van into the back of the ambulance. And this is the most common, and the one that most people use the most, uh, because you can get out of your seat, go right in the back, vice versa, you can speak with the other people in the back. Uh, it's much smaller, more compact. It's not usually as high, you know, usually you can stand up in it. I'm 6'1", I gotta scrunch just a tiny bit. So it's about six feet in, inside, maybe a little less. Uh, the entire coach is made completely out of aluminum. All of this skin, all of these doors, the roof is one piece of aluminum, and that's what makes these things what they are. That's what makes them so special. Now the reason a lot of people like to use these as camper conversions is because if you were to take any other kind of a vehicle, whether it's a box truck, just a regular van, pretty much anything, nothing is built like one of these. If you watch the crash test videos on these ambulances like this, you can see that they can roll this thing like dice and it really doesn't do anything to it. It didn't even break the mirror. And if you're strapped in properly, you won't even be injured. And, and some of the newer ambulances, ambulances actually have uh, side curtain restraints that, you know, well, uh, give you a nice pillow so you don't hit your head. Everything inside is padded. The other great thing about using these for conversions is they're already wired. They already are wired for electrical. AC, they're already plumbed with hoses that you can convert to propane from oxygen if you like. Um, there's already lighting. And quite frankly, a lot of people like to gut these things out, which I really don't think is smart because you're gonna tear out some of the best, strongest components that are made out of aluminum and antimicrobial and anti-rust uh, materials, and then replace it with cheap wood from Ikea and Home Depot, and put in you know cheap paneling and cheap this, and, and try to make it lighter, when really it's not necessary all the time. You know, the structure of these things are made in a way that you could park a car on the roof of this van and drive down the road with it, and it wouldn't make a difference. Another thing that makes these things great uh, for conversions, they're already set up with front and rear air conditioning, heating. They're very, very well insulated. They're made to go into extremely harsh environments like this one was used by a fire department in New York. So it was designed in a way that they know that parts of trees or buildings or rocks are gonna might be falling on top of this thing. It's gonna be going into dangerous zones. This one being a 99 quite possibly could have been part of the rescue mission after 9-11. I don't have any proof of that, but being a New York firefighter um, ambulance from that time period, probably. I think that's pretty amazing. But the way these things are built, I mean, this particular one has a hitch on it. You know, my 7.3 liter turbo diesel at Ford Excursion that I drive all the time regularly tows this trailer, which is a 32 foot trailer with over 10,000 pounds in it. Now, this weighs a bit more than my Excursion probably weighs about I think it has a gross vehicle weight of about 10,000 pounds. It probably weighs at least eight. Uh, so it weighs a little bit more than my truck, but you could definitely tow a trailer behind this thing without any problems. And that's one of the great things about them. They're just built so sturdy. Of course, you already have exhaust ventilation built right in. So you flip a switch, it already has exhaust 
for that, so you don't really need to put in additional exhaust necessarily. Um, and it's not necessarily meant for off-grid living the way it sits. Now, if you want to convert one of these into an off-grid camper, you're going to want to have a minimum of at least $10,000 to do that, to put in solar panels, the controllers, and you're going to want at least 800 to 1,000 um, you know, amps of uh, lithium ion battery. You know, you're going to need a lot of power in order to run a 12 volt powered uh, air conditioner, which you can get for about $3,000, which you can put on the roof. A lot of people will use mini splits and put half of it either on top of the vehicle or inside one of the cabinets. And you just have storage for days in these things. I mean, we all know what the inside of one of these looks like, and we're all, we are going to go inside, but uh, we'll talk about you know some of the storages and some of the other functions of what makes an ambulance like this so great. You could pick something up like this for about 10 grand all the time. And here this is, a 20-year-old vehicle, and it's still perfectly fine. And that has to go with the build quality of these things and why I think it, you really should leave the interiors kind of alone, do some modification. But I've seen a lot of people completely gut them and then simply replace them with cheap wood cabinets because they're trying to save a little weight. I think you're better off leaving a lot of this stuff in there and doing some simple modifications to it. That's just my opinion. It's totally up to you what you want to do. Before we go in, we'll uh, take a look at some of the storage. Most of these are all pretty much set up the same. They kind of want to make them sort of uniform for these EMT firefighters and stuff. They want them to be very similar. So the builders will usually set these up a lot the same. You always have this big box here. A lot of people, uh, sometimes this will go all the way to the top and people will cut this out. This is a great place to put batteries, water tanks, tools, or cut it out if you're trying to put in a bed uh, this way. Well, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But the construction of these doors are all aluminum, right? Aluminum inside and out. I mean, there really isn't an RV uh, that's on this kind of build quality. You've seen me talk about the Prevo buses, like I have my 40-foot Prevo bus, which is all made of stainless steel. The way these are built and the way they're put together, this will literally last forever. I mean, there's no reason for it to ever fail. Here we have another box, which is the same as that one. Has a little bit of a pass-through here where they have uh, hazardous waste where they would throw that in there and just put a little trash can in there, really. Again, tons of storage, lighting, waterproof in here. Uh, it's made to, they're expecting spills and things to happen. So, so much storage. Now, I'm having trouble with this particular door right now. Uh, this lock is jammed. This is where an oxygen tank would go. I can't open this door right now. I gotta fix this little lock so I can open it. But I've looked in here before and this is just a you know cabinet about like that. And this is a great place to put shelving, whatever. Another great place to put batteries and things. Let's go around the other side. There's usually a door right here. We have some loading ramps in here because the guy I bought it from was using this to haul around his motorcycles. He was going to the track and he would put his motorcycle right in the middle, which is perfect. This is usually used for backboard stretcher uh, storage or other really tall items. Sometimes they'll put tanks in these areas. But again, another great storage area where, you know, like for instance, if you were using this for going to the track with a motorcycle or something, or you wanted to uh, keep ramps or, or whatever long things in here, ladders, great place to put those things. We have another lower storage compartment here. And, you know, again, another place you could put a rack of lithium batteries, controllers, chargers, tools, storage. These things are pretty watertight. I took this thing to the car wash yesterday and pressure washed the whole thing, and I was pretty impressed by how well these keep water out, even with pressure washing right into the corners. Didn't get any water in there. So uh, they're designed for all weather. Typically, this little spot here is used for extra batteries. And that's what we have here. We have a battery tray, which I need to replace these batteries in this one. The battery tray slides out, and it'll usually hold about two or three extra batteries. All diesels usually have at least two batteries. And on a diesel van like this one, you would sometimes have an extra battery storage here anyway, usually under the van that you have to access under there. So from the factory, it comes routed with a harness that goes to a battery there anyway, usually. And then this one here, this storage is interesting because on almost all of these units, this is designed in a way that they would put their, their portable bags, you know, their AEDs, the, the uh, 
you know, their, their kits that they would go into the house or, or into the property with them. And this is designed to be accessed for, from both outside and inside, and we'll show you that when we go inside. But this is typically the way almost all ambulances are set up. You know, you grab your gig bag, you go do your thing, you put it in there, and then you can reach into that same bag if you need something else from the inside through another compartment. And a lot of times people will use this space to put in a shower, a toilet, um, or you know some other kind of thing that you would want to access from both sides. A lot of people will put a shower that they can shower outside or inside, um, but you have to do a lot of modification and it's a pretty tight squeeze. And then of course, we have our entryway here where we go inside. Let's go check it out. Uh, okay, climbing up in here, you can see it's pretty tall, um, still not quite full height like some of the big, big ambulances, but that can be a plus because it is slightly shorter. You know, you might be able to squeeze through a drive through You might even be able to get into a parking garage. You'll be able to get into tighter spaces and that's what makes the smaller Type 3s an advantage. You got all the power, all the strength, but not as much as the size. Here is some of the access of this cabinet we were talking about earlier that where you can access from both sides. In this unit, which is the wheeled coach, this is all air conditioning and heating. You have a triple filter system through here called the PAF system. Now, the HEPA filter that goes in here is like 250 bucks. It's about 300 bucks to do all three filters. A lot of people will take the HEPA filter out and just put in a regular home air filter. Uh, because they don't really need medical quality air in here. But if you're somebody who suffers from allergies and you're going to be going out to the desert and stuff, you put this system in there, it might be expensive and you have to change that filter out every year. But at least you have actual medical quality HEPA filter air coming through your air conditioning and heating system, which is controlled here. Actually, the exhaust vent is on. Let me turn that off. That's probably making a little bit of noise. You have the patient heat and cool system. You flip this switch and there's a regular thermostat here to control that. This particular unit has Rockford Fosgate speakers hooked up in here with a separate audio system that was already wired in that they could PA, but you know, the, the, the EMTs could hear the PA from back here. Typically, you're gonna have this seat sitting here, right? This is a jump seat that always sits on top of some kind of electronics. So usually this seat, like for instance, this one, you, uh, you pull a lever here, the entire seat folds forward, and then underneath it, which I'll show you in just a minute, um, or I'll, I'll cut in right here with some video. You'll look in there and you can see this is where on this particular rig They have the vacuum they have the inverter and the charger and some other modules there and you know the generally I have found from my experience they almost always put in the same Vanner brand 1050 watt inverter because they don't need that much electrical power in here to run the stuff that they're doing which by the way let me let me pull this back again because I want to show you in this particular rig behind here is a whole bunch of electronics. These are for modules for the flashers, the siren, there's a breaker panel and a relay and some other things, but we're going to show you some of the electric, other electrical stuff. And this really isn't stuff that you need, but when you put in your solar system, this is a great place that you can tie in and put all those other controllers and things as well. This little thing is a pass-through that goes to that other uh, compartment where the oxygen tank is that way they can reach in there and play with the valve and turn it on and off and whatnot but this comes in handy uh, for um, you know other things you want to put in there and you can see how thick these walls are look how thick thick that access is but there's already wired outlets that's one of the great things about these these vans they're already electrically wired you already have electricity so you what I was gonna say is you can simply take out this thousand watt inverter and put in like a three thousand watt inverter without much hassle and it just plugs right in and it's already wired. It's already ready. There's outlets all over the place. It's great. Up above here is another relay bank, easy to get to, you know, with basic instructions, simple terminal strips, really easy to work these relays, really easy to work these thermal switches. This is super easy uh, to mess with. Then of course you have all of these different um, uh, cabinets to put things. We'll talk now. Most uh, most of these are going to have what you see right here. I think they call this a CPR seat. I don't know if that's the exact uh, terminology, but it's designed so that your EMT worker can sit here with the patient here and perform CPR 
and also be strapped in or they can tend to the patient tending to their oxygen their IV getting them ready all of those kind of things the person here in the jump seat would be able to relay information hooked up to the control panel talking on the radio talking with the driver all those things but this is a great place to sit now what I've seen a lot of people do is take this seat out and put their refrigerator right there great place to put a refrigerator mounted there's electricity and everything you need right there inside that cabinet is another great place to put a refrigerator but the way this system is set up you kind of want to leave all this air conditioning and everything right there you don't want to move it so you're kind of limited to what you can do there then you have all this real estate on this side now what a lot of people will do is rip out all of this here and then they'll put the bed this direction right i think if it's just one person like me i'm just going to put in a trucker bunk it's going to be like 48 inches by 80 inch 10 inch foam mattress i'm going to build a little platform that extends this out to here with some legs and just leave my bunk there all the time people will set them up as murphy beds where they fold up and out of the way but quite frankly i don't think it's necessary i'd rather put more storage here underneath it and have a permanent bed right there then i could have a little bit more storage but i still have access to the back where i can get in and out and i could still use it to load things if i wanted to if i want to take it and use it as a as a vehicle to go loading, you know, buying things, whatever, I can do that as well. Now, as we were saying, you have all of this storage and this, all this material is super, super strong, doesn't rattle, isn't gonna move. You can either leave these things here and put store things in them, or you can modify some of these and cut them out. You could easily put a microwave, uh, you know, a mini fridge, all sorts of things, but you just have tons of storage. I've been debating on where I could put a toilet in here and I may just get a portable, what they call like a cassette toilet. I just set it in here, use it, and then take it and empty it out. A lot of people will put in composting toilets, waterless toilets. You know, this is a great area to make a kitchen area where you can have a sink and whatever. And that's all great. Um, I'm not gonna be doing that kind of off-grid living in one of these. I just need something that I can stay a night or two in when I'm traveling. I wanna be able to tow a trailer. I drive back and forth between uh, here in Las Vegas and Dallas all the time. So I'm just looking for a rig to do that with But um, it's great that you'll see everything's padded see these little pads Just so that you never actually crack your head on any sharp objects This padding goes all along the entire perimeter and and uh, this fiberglass up here is relatively soft You can see where there were some handles here that they took out probably because people were bumping their heads on them There's handles that you could hold on to but the roof of this thing is just as powerful quite frankly as the the floor uh like i said you which, when you saw from the crash test you can kind of get away with anything you have other outlets you have access to that other uh storage in there and of course you know you have where you could put a bed here just use this for a bench seat usually there's storage under here oh we got like towels and things can't make that too much more shallow but what you could do if you wanted to is you could remove this and cut this down to the level part of that where the wheel is removing all this other piece and lower the bed some more if you really wanted to and you could set it up on a hinge system where it folds up and against the wall there's already hooks here that you made for the ivs and things that you could connect it to to hang it up out of the way so it wouldn't be difficult to create a murphy bed right here it'd be very very easy um, there's just so much that you can do with these things and as opposed to buying an old camper campers are made out of like cheap thin wood cheap insulation it's just a flatbed trailer with a, on a crappy van this is an industrial piece of equipment you know fire departments uh ambulances they can't mess around they cannot have anything that could possibly be unreliable because seconds count not only for their lives but the lives they're saving and they trust themselves to these vans these engines these transmissions and these builders there's a reason and I think that that's what makes these so great. So if you can get a hold of one of these ambulances like this one, this one only has less than 80,000 original miles in 20 years, which is nothing. Everybody knows that the 7.3 liter turbo diesel made by International is good for like half a million miles. I've seen these things with four or 500,000 miles on them still running. They're unkillable. My Ford Excursion that I drive back and forth from here to Dallas every, it put 2,500 miles a month on it. It's got 260,000 miles on it and it's like new. It, it's, it's like nothing. This thing's 20 years old and it's like new. Inside the cab, it's just like any other Ford van. 
Ford E150, 250, 350. Very easy to drive. The box isn't that much wider than the actual van. It is a dually, so it is full lane width, but I'm used to driving big vehicles. You have some basic controls here that operate all the little flashers and all those little things, which we can get into that. You know, you're not legally supposed to have any colored lights on the front of the vehicle. You're not supposed to have red or blue, green or purple. So you just replace the lenses with clear and you're fine. Nobody will ever bother you. But a lot of people have said that they've driven around in these ambulances for years and nobody ever bothers them. Because, you know, here's the thing. They think it's an ambulance. And uh, if you don't tell them different, nobody's going to complain. But you have all this power, you have gauges, and then you have this idle speed controller. Uh, and we'll talk about that. Okay, this is your idle speed control with voltage regulator. Now you set the voltage that you want and it will control your idle speed to make sure you're putting out the voltage that you need. So when we turn on all the lights and everything, it'll ramp up the idle and it'll keep the batteries charged. That way you have enough power to keep doing everything you want. Not all vehicles have this one, this, but this one does. Hope I answered some of your questions about these, uh, these ambulances. Like I said, I am not an expert. I am not an EMT. I'm just learning about these like you are. But I've been fascinated with them for a long time. And this was my first one, and I think it's really cool. Here's one of the cool things about why you would want an ambulance. Now listen, I'm not suggesting in any way that you try and, and impersonate or do stolen valor of them. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, you might want to make sure to subscribe to this channel, share, and also comment below with your experiences. We're going to be not only having this one, but buying more of these, and we're going to build some really cool ambulance campers. And so for all of my EMT firefighters and things out there, thank you for your service. I'm not trying to pretend to be you, I promise. Nothing but love and respect for you guys. And I would love to hear from some of you, some of your comments, some of your experience about working with these amazing vehicles. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. I'm Video Bob. Mm-hmm.